Oh, hey there. You're looking very strong, attractive, beautiful, and or handsome today. Smart, as well. One might describe you as magnificent. But magnificence is not achieved in a short moment. Sometimes it can take three or even up to four hours to achieve total magnificence. Sigvald knows this well. Just look at his purple capes. Are you looking at them? Because we're going to talk about purple capes today. I want to paint up these shimmering, shining, velveteen, oh-so-splendid purple capes. I'm going to be taking a look at his lower loincloth today, but the colors on his cape are the same all the way around. So let's get into it and get our hands dirty. Dirty and purple. In the beginning, the perfect prancing purple prince Sigvald did pounce throughout the plentiful parks and places in the realms of Sigmar. I'm twisting my tongue and I'm painting a model. So we've already seen in the last video how I started off purple robes using the airbrush. I used beaten purple, murderous magenta, Vallejo black. I think I left the Liquitex titanium white off the menu for the airbrush. That would not go well, but it is present here today on the palette to produce our final purple push. I've been working on Sigvald proper off to the side, so we can see where we are going with this. But this gives me a chance to talk about painting cloaks and how the light falls on top of it. It's a downward facing light source and I was using my airbrush to mimic that light source. Everything after that is just a fortification of the tones that are already there. Just a few small adjustments, just making things a little more saturated. I'm trying to cut in to a lot of these angles that maybe I, I was a little nervous to airbrush into. Some of these finer areas are not uh, suitable for the larger spray of the airbrush. So I want to come in, just clean things up, accent this highlight right here. It's a good example. And I like to tell people in order to get the best contrast, especially on painting fabrics. You want to tuck the shadows into the highlights. This volume looks so nice because there's a fine line coming through and separating these two areas. A little observation of uh, real life objects, a little still life study will definitely help to inform you. But just studying how light plays across fabrics and curtains, many flowing capes of Sigvald. I'm also locking in a lot of these shadows, just making these separations a little more noticeable, a little more smooth. Wasn't able to airbrush every fine little detail in there. So I can come in with the old handy hand brush. And really just accenting what's already there that airbrush pass. But I wanted to share this with people so we could talk about the many thin layers. To break this down even further, take a look at the old learning cube first. Again, to just demonstrate how thin this paint is. See how the consistency, the amount of paint is crucial to the control that I can get from it. If I add, if I have too much of that mixture in place, it's not going to blend, it's going to slosh around. So I'm moving at it very thin, measured amount, just like so. So that's one layer. And remember, I like to stick to at least the rule of threes. At least three of those thin layers before you're going to see a noticeable, passable result. I know it's, it's difficult for a lot of people trying to understand this. Like I, I understand I'm supposed to thin my paint down and gradually layer it up, but how do I know when to stop? What looks good for a single layer and the succession of the many layers? The answers are all in the cube, my friend. Now 
coming at this cape with that exact same consistency on my brush. It takes a little bit of experimentation to find the right consistency with every, every different color of paint. The recipes vary, the consistency varies. I can say though that this murderous magenta it's very thin right out of right out of the pot. I can dip a wet brush into it and just blend away. I don't have to thin it down very much. I was doing it early earlier just out of a force of habit. You can always make the paint as thin as possible so it, it was doing no harm. But there's also a degree of thinness where it's going to be a little absurd. You can go just a little bit thicker dial it in, you'll find the perfect amount. I have to pick up these folds as well. Using a mixture of the beaten purple and murderous magenta. I drop down in brightness as I know this area is underneath another cloak. Tucks into the back of his waist, so it'll be a little darker back here. Still want to highlight it. So just mixing that magenta down with a little bit of purple. Now, with the solid foundation of murderous magenta, you can start building things up. I'll gradually introduce greater amounts of white into the murderous magenta. Apply it in very small, controlled amounts. Use this to blend, edge highlight a little bit, just move around in these brighter areas. There's a lot of cool texture on this cloak as well. A lot of um, cool opportunities for light to flow in interesting ways. Kind of like how it bows up on the side here. Be collecting a little more light, so we'll build that up. Tips, these edges. I won't carry these edge highlights all the way down across every area. I want to make a little bit of a darker color for lining down low. Probably just the pure murderous magenta. Remember to drop in volume as you move into a deeper area. Everything's a gradient. Pick up this little fold. Blend a little bit on the back as well. But less is more. The uh, majority of the work is done. I was able to kick it off with the airbrush and get things started extra fast. There is more behind me than there is ahead. Just keep building these up for a little while. As I'm working these blends up, going back and forth, but every so often, I lay a color down, Let's get this white highlight in place, just like so. And I'll come back with that deeper, that mid tone, and I'll just glaze it right in that mid area. Mid tone goes in the mid zone big surprise, but I'm enveloping these layers back and forth and kind of glazing them over one another. It helps with the smoothness. And yes, there is a bit of a micro wet blend taking place. Uh, maybe micro is the wrong word. There's a wet blend going on and it's taking place between two very thin layers. You can wet blend with thin glazes. Of course, it's 
best effect is going to be over an area that's already been established with some heavy duty. Start bringing these pink edges up a little further as well. Goal is always to work everything up to nearly white and then just cap it off with that final little pinpoint. Perfect little white cherry on top. Again, I'm starting to pull these a lot of interesting kind of smaller folds in the cape. I like these wrinkled areas. It's giving me the chance to add a lot of a lot more shimmer and, and sheen to this, giving it more of a kind of velvety look, and I think that's appropriate for Slanesh. These flowing robes. So a good thing is happening. Pull a little bit more of that shimmering, lined look a little deeper into these shadows. So again, mixing down, it's mirrors magenta with just a little bit of white. So go into these deeper recesses. Still want to pull the same uh, some highlights up, but a deeper volume. I can use this same color to Again, glaze over these mid areas, smooth things out. The brush is dancing like fire. So I'm going to slowly work up a little bit of a shine line, feeding into these wrinkles that are sculpted on the cape. It's kind of inspiring me to pull some more of that similar texture off of it. I like this area of reflection happening here, so just very gradually building this up, I'm just moving my brush in the same direction, kind of a polished steel sort of look, to let that sit and dry a bit, um, let's also build that up on the top of this flap. the same area. Let's see if I leave the brighter colors more towards the edge of the cape. It's going to create, just add to that kind of natural blousing, bowing, blowing, flapping. So many words to describe these capes. But seeing is believing. You can see it happening right here. Alright, let's cap off these blends. Those final little touches of white. I'll even be playing along this line. Could be just a consistent line of white, or I could lift it and drop it. Just like so. Further accenting every little curve in the cape. Oh, he shines like a bell in the night. Rihanna, I mean Sigvald. I hope you all enjoyed the tutorial on these flowing robes. I don't get to uh, paint the color purple very often. I don't get to do beautiful things, and I've been craving to do something quite magnificent. So thank you for coming along on the ride with me. Um, I also want to point out there are some some white uh, emblems on his on his cape. I didn't cover those in the video but they are painted using the exact same colors. They just look a little brighter because I added larger highlight portions, larger amounts of white to the same purple up to murderous magenta mixture. So don't go quite as deep into the depths and make sure that your highlight areas, the brighter areas are just a little bit larger. Please let me know any comments, concerns, 
deep inner fears down below. I'm always happy to answer questions as we know by now. The more questions we have, the more conductive the learning process is. So stick around and I'll most definitely be seeing you next time because I am looking into your soul right through this screen.